so far we have discussed the mathematical properties of the traveling wave in general. Now in this section we will discuss the more specific uh, problem and the more um, physical problem that is the speed of the waves on the strings. Okay. In this case, if we have a string and as a medium of a traveling wave and if you stretch the string with a tension T tension T and if the linear uh, density of the string is mu the linear density is mu here the linear density means the mass per unit length of the string we can show that the velocity of the traveling wave along the string V is equal to the square root of T over mu. So this is the velocity of the traveling wave or the speed. We may use the speed because this is the magnitude only. It not tell us the, the, the direction. So the speed of the wave on strings is V equal to the square root of T over mu. Okay. We can prove this uh, expression of V as follow. Let us so uh, let us consider let us consider a pulse of wave moving on the string to the light like this uh, our assumption here is that the magnitude of the pulse is small compared to the total length of the string this is a condition of our calculation here the magnitude of the pole is much Less than the length of the string. This condition guarantee that when the then the power pass the spring like this, it will not change the linear density or the tension of the string as the power pass through this point okay so if this condition hold we can prove um, this expression to do that we will change our frame of reference for convenience in this figure, if we are an observer 
and look at the moving path path to the string. If we are at less, okay, compare uh, or relative. to the string if we are at least relative to the string what we will see is that the pulp move along the string but the string does not move with the pulp the string will move up and down okay once the pulp pass to the spring at this point the the string will may move up and down, but uh, on average, it's still at the same position. Every element of the string does not move with the wave. However, if we change our frame of reference, and now we are the observer that move along the pole with the same speed as a pulp, what we will see is that the medium with the string here move past ourselves. Okay. We will see the pulp stay still. We will see the stationary pulp, but in that pulp the medium, which is the string, move past through the power. If we move with the power, here this observer move with the power. Okay, so this guy will see the medium move past himself. And if he looks at a small element of the string, this part, this part, when we move past through this observer, at the top of the pole. If the the element of the string here is small enough, if it's small enough, we can approximately assume that this this part of the spring of the string is approximately a part of a circle okay it's a, approximately a part of a circle so it means that for the observer that move with the pole he or she will see that the, the element of the string move past to him or herself and at this point it moves like a circular motion it's moved like a circular motion circular motion okay so once this element move as a circular motion we can use uh, the technique that we have developed in the chapter on the uniform circular motion to explain the motion of this element 
first of all, we can see that when an object moves in a circular motion, we need a centripetal force. And in this case, it is quite easy to see that the tension on the string acts as the centripetal force. You can see that we have the we have the tension on this side, and we have the tension on this side. And if you uh, calculate the total force at this element, you can see that the the um, horizontal component of the tension cancel, and we have only the radial component. And this radial component of tension acts as a central force for this element to move along the circular path. So, we can see that the uh, vertical component of the tension, or we can also say that this is a radial component, this is a radial component because it is along the radial from the, this element to the center O. So we have that the radial force is equal to the two of the tension times sine theta. Okay, if you look here, you can see that. The, the angle theta is here, and if you dissolve the component of the tension, you will have the tension along the horizontal direction and the tension along the radial direction or the uh, vertical direction. So, if you dissolve the tension to the component, the uh, radial or the vertical component here in this figure can be add up to get 2t psi theta but the horizontal component will cancel okay, so, we, so the net force is uh, Fc which equals to the 2t psi theta uh, now if this element is small enough This element is small enough. This means that the angle here will be small too. The angle here and the angle here will be small too. And if the angle small, we can do the approximation with the radial component of the tension is approximately equal to the 2t times theta because we have the approximation that for a small theta for the small angle theta sine theta is approximately equal to theta okay so we have the centripetal force that make this element move in a circular path next we will use the second law here is equal to ma okay however in the uh, um, centripetal motion this equal to m v square over r here v is a uh, velocity of the element when it passed to the observer. So it means that for the observer which at least relative to the string or to the uh, or to the earth uh, we will have that 
this value v you give us the velocity of the um, string the velocity of the wave on the string okay now the la the the parameter that we don't have information now is the value of m okay if we look at this figure we can see that this angle and this angle are both theta so it means that if the linear density of the um, the string is mu so we have that this equal to the mu is v square over r mu is the linear density the density of the string per unit length and they don't have this okay uh, okay, let's change the symbol a little bit. This is the mu data is v square. The next step is that data s is equal to the arc link. have arc link of the string in this region and the angle if you draw the line at both uh, two ends of this element to the center of the circle you will get the radius r okay so we if the length of this element if the length of this element is delta s so the mass of this element is delta s mu okay so we have the delta s mu in the position of the mass okay uh, okay let's change the notation a little bit because this is a big R. This is a big R. Okay. And next, we know that delta S can be written as a two time R theta. If you look at this figure, you can see that. If the angle here is theta, you will have the angle here is theta, and you can have half of the element, which equal to the <coughs> uh, r theta. But if you, we look at the second half of the element two, so you put put two in front of the the expression. So what we have here is that is equal to the mu of um, 2 times uh, theta times v square over r and you can see that many terms cancel this r and r um, this theta and this theta the parameter 2 here and the parameter 2 here so um, we have that v square is equal to the t over mu and if you take the square root of this v you will get this formula v is equal to the square root of t over mu so 
so that is the proof of the velocity of the wave in one dimension on a string.